Welcome to our third part in working with BJB TC1630. For this lesson we are going to be doing a full uh, layup using UltraCal 30. We are going to be moulding this sugar skull sculpt. I have already taken the liberty of doing the basic prosthetic clay up which we covered in uh, our first video on, on claying up a prosthetic, creating the runoff and the cutting edge. And we've also got our flange already in place. So let's, uh, let's get on with it and uh, get this thing molded. So the first step, because 1630 is so uh, such a non-viscous liquid, it, it's very runny. So if we just try and do a layup like we did with our gel coat, uh, it's going to just run all over the table and we're not going to get the sufficient amount of uh, coverage. So I'm going to create like a wall, like a dam wall around the entire perimeter of the flange, much like we did with the last one when we molded the, the triple horn piece but it's not going to be a solid pour because that uses an awful lot of material and uh, gets quite expensive and, and it's unnecessary. It's fine for small things but uh, for something like this I think that it'll be fine if we just do a, a small wall And I'm going to use this thicker stick just because we've got the, the thickness of this, this flange. Uh, I don't want to don't want to risk the other one not being quite uh, quite thick enough. side Now I did take the liberty of previously coating the sculpt with uh, a thin layer of the of the matte finish. We will be going over it with the matte finish on the inside of this wall. We probably won't get any more on the sculpt itself. We don't want to build up those cutting edges too much, and we still have to add our um, add our mold release. So sure that's pushed right up against the flange. I'm 
I've got a small little small little gap there, so these joins together. Now I will be putting reinforcement there to reinforce those joins but I'm not going to do as many as I did last time because it's not needing to support the wall. This isn't going to have a whole a whole mess of, of uh, 1630 units so it doesn't need to support the same weight as a filled mould of, of 1630 so Sort of smoothen those joints on the inside. Just try and reduce the likelihood of them getting stuff in there and wanting to split those joints open. And then uh, we just cut this into triangles. And we just pop one on each of these, on each of these joins. And I've got an extra strip here, so let's just add some extra just for safety. I don't know that I would uh, cut a whole nother slab off just to just to reinforce it but since since we've got them already cut off we may as well shove them on. Never hurts to be safe. that for a second to dry while we set up our 1630. So I've taken the liberty of pouring up 250 of each for our print coat batch. Which granted isn't very much to do that whole thing. Okay. So you get right into all of the touch points, any keys, any areas where you think it might grab.
Okay. And I'm going to pour this, this on now. The um, that wall we put up will collect any of the runoff. And the reason that I decided to mold this in 1630 and not in uh, the epoxy is because of how runny it is. So this way, because there's so much detail on this on this particular sculpt, uh, and the gel coat is a little bit thick, so this way I can get into all of the detail more easily without having to push so hard against the sculpt that I might dislodge some of these smaller details. Make sure you go very, very gently in all directions. You don't want to have it run down and create a little air bubble because uh, that'll ruin your piece. Make sure that you brush it into all of your all of your cutting edge. And just like when we're making our core, I'm just going to just keep brushing it up until it starts to thicken up. Make sure I get a really nice print coat that, get, that captures all of our fine details. And of course it'll just run down and run down and run down, but that's okay. It's very much a cumulative effect. So, see, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. Just be really careful when you're picking picking it up from the flange area. You don't want to bump your bump your wall or bump your sculpt. You also don't want to push too hard and indent your flange. So I'm just lightly kind of turning the brush and just almost stirring it and just picking some up as I go. Now the next step is going to be uh, thickening, thickening the 1630, just like we did with the core. And because we covered all of that with the core, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show it in here. I'm just going to go in the other room where my fans are. I'm going to thicken it up. Um, if you want to see how to do that, just go watch the first in the series of UltraCal 30, and uh, it'll show you how to thicken the stuff using Cabasil. It's going to be exactly the same process. So. Uh, for time and efficiency, I am uh, going to refrain from, from adding that same technique into this video. The way that I'm trying to structure these videos is to build upon the stuff that we've covered in the last ones so that uh, it gives you a good foundation to move on to more complicated and more difficult molds. So probably the, the easiest mold is the first one we did, which is the box mold. And that's basically just a, you know, wall it and pour it. Uh, you can use 1630 to create a box mold if you like. Um, if, if you're wanting to, you know, just have a one part 1630, just box it up, pour the stuff in. 
very simple, just like the silicone. But uh, typically, if you have a hard mold, like 1630 Ultra Cal fiberglass, you'll be pulling something soft out of it, something like silicone, something like latex or, or a soft urethane, some kind of rubber. And then if you're going to be pulling uh, solid, sort of rigid parts, uh, resins, 1630, um, plaster, fiberglass parts, then you'll have a soft mold, like a, like a soft urethane, a silicone, latex, you know, something soft, so it won't lock the, the part in. Starting to thicken up nicely. Just make sure that we capture all of the detail and get a decent coating. We don't, I don't really want to see any clay. If there's any clay poking through make sure that you just put a little bit extra back up on there. These high points here on the brow um, look like they're going to be our most difficult spot. So. And of course the nose, also in between the teeth here, we want to make sure that we have a decent amount in there. I would hate to have a gap and then when we put the uh, thickened over the top leave a little bubble, a little gap and then ruin the teeth of the prosthetic. nose is starting to poke through, same here on the side, so just, just be vigilant. I think that that's uh, I think that that's good. So I'm uh, going to give that about 20 minutes to where it's starting to 
starting to thicken, starting to harden. Don't really want to do this without it being almost cured. So there, there, there is a danger with this technique to if you go off and start doing something else and then you forget about it you're going to be in trouble because uh, you do have to catch it before it fully cures. You still have to be able to get that finger in there and poke that, uh, that dent in to it otherwise the next, the next batch won't stick to this current batch. So this is almost kicked. So I'm going to go and remove this wall because we're going to need access to that. I wouldn't want to leave it too much longer. This is, you can see here how it barely, barely dents. So any longer and we run the risk of having it not work properly. Remove all of that. Now I've gone up and mixed up quite a large batch of 1630 and thickened it up with the cabasil. I think in total I did uh, 1400 of each and I'm just going to make sure that I get this into every bit. I don't want to have any area of the cutting edge or sculpt detail where we didn't uh, make sure that we got a good amount in. Make sure that your stick is nice and wet. And it's just like I see a cake. <laughs>
bit of the coat of the acetone. So it's on the, the bottom flat so that it'll stand on its own when we're running it. Making a little little uh, recess for mold strap to go.
Now you can't do this with vinyl gloves because uh, it'll just dissolve the acetone will just dissolve the, the vinyl. I mean it will eventually dissolve the nitrile And then uh, and we leave it, leave it to set. Okay, so this is pretty much cured. So lift it up off the board. Take that sharp edge off. Now when you're using this, never put your hand here and do it like this because invariably you're going to jab yourself and cut your finger. Always keep your hand behind the sharp edge of the chisel or here out of the way. Okay, so if we put this like this, you can see that if we'd have done it in the first way that we did that first one, the wall would be up here and we'd have all this extra material all the way around that is uh, that would be just an absolute waste. It would take almost a full kit of 1630. Whereas this way we've been able to mold it, it's really sturdy and uh, and we've saved some material. So let's open it up. Got our three, our three bits of wood. It's open. Very good technique that one. And let's see what we got. Well, came out pretty clean as well. Not quite as clean as last time, but uh, can't really complain about that. I thought I was going to be digging clay. The, all of this, I thought it was going to stick to this one, and uh, that'd be digging clay out for sure. But, uh, it's not too bad. Oh, 
Okay. So we'll remove one of the big obvious chunks of clay. Then I'm going to go through with my uh, number seven spatula with my little bit and I'm just going to lift out all of these little things. Now you're always better to lift it to try and pry them away, curl and lift them away than to try and just scrape it because then you leave residue and it sucks. Whereas if you can actually just, uh, just lift it all together, it makes for a much easier time. So instead of just scraping this out, if we can get that and actually, let's see, it's not wanting to lift. I may not have much of a choice, but if we can actually, oh, there we go. Just lift it away rather than just. No. That's not one to work, we're just going to have to scrape it. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to go clean this up. It's pretty much exactly the same thing, just the WD 40, the alcohol. Um, and uh, then I'm going to maybe take it over to the grinder and just do a little bit of clean up on it. So I'll meet you over at the grinder once I've got this thing clean. We're all done with our cleaning, as you can see. Totally, totally clean. It took a little bit. There was quite a bit of detail there to scrape out of. But uh, as you can see, it's, it's pretty clean. And... Uh, you know, as far as molds go, it's not a, an ugly mold. I mean, the outside, you could totally work with that. There's nothing there that's going to cause problems for your hands. No sharpness, no sharp edges around here. But I want to just kind of finish it down a little bit and, you know, make sure that, uh, make sure it looks a little neater. So I'm just going to run it around on the grinder here. Um, you don't have to do this particular uh, step if you don't want to. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this mold. You, I could totally work with this for many, many years, but uh, me being the perfectionist that I am, just want to tidy it up a little bit.
can see that that's just starting to sort of finish the, the outside down a little bit. You can just keep going. Make sure that you had enough material on the outside that you're not going to blow through. It's, it's getting a little thin down here, so I'm going to need to really watch myself there. Um, but uh, we just keep going around the outside, and it'll just make it much, much prettier, much smoother.
And uh, there we have it. Nicely finished down. Everything's smooth. Just gotta mark it up and then we can run it.